Long exposure photography is powerful. But, um, can you do it with a phone? Well, no. And yes. For a technological marvel that it is, iPhone camera can't do long exposures. The shutter speed maxes out at one third of a second. I used to think it was a physical limitation, but phones don't have physical shutters, so for the uninitiated, you need shutter speeds way longer than one third of a second to properly explore long exposure photography. It captures the passage of time and you make it by exposing your shot for seconds or even minutes, usually by placing your camera on a tripod because otherwise it will be too shaky. To achieve these longer shutter speeds on a phone that can't do them, we'll use the magic of computational photography. There are many ways to take long exposures with your iPhone, but I'll focus on three. The first and the easiest way to do this is by using the uh, built-in camera app. You just need to make sure you turn live photos on and after you take the photo, you can swipe up on it and select long exposure. When you take a live photo, your phone actually captures a short video and then it can blur the movement that happened in your frame while it was recording. The second app I already talked about, it's called Spectre and it presents a step up from the previous method. You can choose your shutter speed, there's auto stabilization, and you can choose whether you're going for motion blur or light trails. Moment is a powerhouse of an app and it can do anything you throw at it from photos to videos to time lapses, but honestly, sometimes using it can get a little clunky. For long exposures, you can set your emulated shutter speed and then adjust shutter speed and ISO for every individual shot within it. I discovered a weird bug. The app will tell you it's shooting for motion blur, where in reality, it'll be shooting for light trails. It's not a huge deal, but it is something that I encountered over and over. And if you're using Moment, you need to be constantly mindful of this, because if you don't have enough time, you may or may not miss a shot, like I did here. On a tripod, I think we can agree that there's not too much difference in how the results look. But what if we're shooting handheld? Okay, if you're shooting handheld, I think it's the easiest with Spectre. I don't know if it's because of the AI stabilization or this little indicator or both of them working together, but on a really cold day with shaky hands and the harsh wind, Spectre did give me the best results. And now for the third part of our test, we're going into the night.
Okay, in this scenario, the native camera doesn't really do much. After all, a live photo is only three seconds long. And if you're shooting light trails, you will want something longer. Moment was great. Inspector, well, I'd like it to be more customizable for something like this. I'd also like it to go longer than nine seconds of simulated long exposure, which is its maximum at this point. But overall, it's been very reliable. All this being said, the winner is... Who cares? On a normal day, if my hands are steady or if there's a railing or a tree to prop my phone against, uh, the built-in camera app can be just enough for a quick and dirty computational long exposure. Spectre is still my favorite, but honestly, I really like the degree of control you have when you use Moment. However, if I need that degree of control, I'm more likely to bring my regular camera instead. If you have a favorite of the three, or if you use a long exposure app I haven't tried and you think I should, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and, um, well, um, you can also subscribe. I'm so good at this.